All right. So good morning, everyone. I'm currently seeing around 30 attendees and counting. It's going to be around one attendee per second. So again, my name is Lawrence Ko, and welcome to another Learn From Home webinar brought to you by the Philippine Society for Talent Development. So as we wait for people to completely, to completely file into the Zoom room today, please can you try our chat and communications functionalities? Just try to send any chat so we have Mr. Roland Konanan. Morning to all. Good morning to you, sir, Mr. Roland. We also have Ms. Paula Orea Marie Andino. I think Ms. Paula is a Suki of PSD They Learn From Home. Good morning to you, too. Mr. Edward Ramiro, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. So I'm currently seeing some of you. Some of your chats are still in the preset of all panelists. So can we change them to all panelists and attendees so that your fellow Participant can also see some of your messages. We have Miss Mary greeting us a good morning. Mr. Nico, Jocelyn, and Shana Dean also greeting us a good morning. We have Miss Anna here from Duty Free Philippines. Thank you for this webinar. It's our pleasure to help and to sustain the learning needs of our particular industry. All right, we're currently at around 50 attendees and still counting. It's going to be very exciting. We have a very exciting topic, very good moderator and very good speaker for us this morning. Okay, so as you can see in our slide here, so far we have around 57 classes for the past few months, around 17,000 and 796,000 minutes viewed in Zoom with over 298,000 minutes viewed in Facebook. And this is all thanks to all your support and to the viewership that we've garnered all throughout this pandemic. Currently at 60 participants, good morning to everyone. And according to Nat, we have 20 live viewers in FB. So we're about to reach 100 participants as early as, what, 11.03. Good morning too to Miss Michelle, Flerilene, Princess, and Arlene. Good morning to everyone. Okay, and as you know, we are on the third week of our Learn From Home theme this August, which is named Tech Train. And this is a month dedicated for the technical trainers of our industry. And we are also live via Zoom and Facebook through our page www.facebook.com slash mypstd. And the live stream of the recording of our previous Learn From Home sessions are also uploaded there. So feel free to view, like, and share learnings to your fellow talent development colleagues. And I think we are ready now to launch our demographics check. So Nat from our PSDD professional team has just launched our usual demographics Zoom call. And we have the following questions this morning. The first one is what type of talent development practitioner are you? Are you a soft skills trainer or are you a technical trainer? Which is going to be the, the central theme and focus for the month. Are you an educator, a teacher? A coach, a mentor? Are you currently in the HR admin that's more or less not specific to the learning function? Are you currently a manager or an executive of your organization? Or are you an independent consultant? The second question is where are you calling from? Are you calling from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao? Or Mindanao? And the third one is is this your first time to join? a PSTD webinar, regardless if it's a free webinar, such as the Learn From Home series or some of our paid webinars. So while you are in the poll, let me just read some of the chat. Oh, we have Miss Sarah Lee here. Hello, Sarah Lee. Good morning. So she's greeting our moderator and our speaker. A good luck. Good morning to you, Sarah Lee. All right. So we currently have the Zoom poll out, the results of the poll out. We currently have majority around a third of our participants today. We have teachers, educators at 31%, followed by HR admin and managers, executives at 19 and 70% respectively. Where are you all calling from? A vast majority, 86% are calling from Luzon and 86% are what we call Suki of PSTD. It's going to be around 31 people 
who are enjoying our learn from home sessions. I think since we started around April. So again, welcome to everyone. I think that's going to be very helpful. The demographics, the demographics is going to be uh, helpful for our speaker and for our moderator so that we know the particular composition of this session. Okay, so I think we can very quickly move to our membership slide. So because we're still waiting for the rest of the participants to come filing in. I would like everyone to join the society as a member and actively contribute to our vision of continually developing the workplace learning and performance improvement profession in the country. As you can see there, quite a few number, quite, whoa, okay, yeah. So quite a few number of benefits that you can get for joining the society. So membership rate for individuals would be at around 2,800 only. And if you are a corporate member or vying to be a corporate member, that's only gonna be 5,600 pesos only. And then on your left side, you can see there some of the freebies such as free pass to all our PSTD monthly ET panan. So that's going to be our general membership meeting. Okay. And of course, more details can be found through our social media pages. You can again visit us through Facebook. That's www.facebook.com slash mypstd. Or you can go directly to our website at www.pstd.org. If you have any questions, queries, or concerns, just contact our PSTD professional team at programs at pstd.org or inquiries at pstd.org. And at this point, we are currently at around 70 plus participants here in Zoom, and we're at around 20, 30 participants in Facebook Live. So in our experience, it's going to balloon to around 250 to 350 by the end of the session. So if you have friends, if you have colleagues that are supposed to be in here but are still not here, please send them a message so that we, so that they won't miss any of the, the, the points being prepared by our speaker for today. And with that, I would now be glad to introduce to you our moderator for this morning. Our moderator is an LND advocate and a lifetime member of PSTD. Having actively served PSTD since 2002, our moderator became the first PSTD Gawad Maestro Champion for Workplace Learning and Performance in 2011. With decades of experience in the talent development field across various sectors, from the public, private, development, and the academe, both here and abroad, our moderator is also an author and editor, having written Workplace Learning and Performance Resource Guide in 2010, Strategic Training for Empowerment in the Workplace in 2012, Guidebook on Competency Modeling and Profiling in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, let, let's give a warm welcome to this morning's Learn From Home moderator, Ms. Maribel Aglipay. Good morning, Maribel. Good morning, Lo. Thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here and to be with you and to learn with you from our um, guest speaker who uh, comes from the hotel industry. Let, uh, let me first give you a few reminders. And as you can see from your screen, attendees will be put on mute to manage the flow of information. And second, for questions, use the Q&A box and uh, and for for your comments, please use the comments box. This enables us to see right away the questions from the comments and reactions. Uh, also, it would help if you change the configuration to all panelists so that all your colleagues here in the room can also see the questions and reactions that you have. Uh, and finally, we will issue certificates to the first 100 participants who will answer the post evaluation, which will automatically open on your browser after the end of the webinar. And by the way, you need to have attended the session at least for 40 minutes to uh, be qualified for that certificate. Okay, so let me now proceed to introduce our beautiful guest speaker. Her, um, 
She has 20 years of human resource experience, a generalist with functional expertise in organization development, talent acquisition, and employee relations. Uh, she has a strong strategy and execution mindset in providing HR support for new digital ventures, startups, mergers, and acquisitions. She is focused on capability building of HR functional counterparts in the strategic business units through learning sessions and sharing of best practices. In terms of her current uh, position, she is Director of Human Resources for Robinson's Land Corporation, Crown Plaza, Manila Galleria, and Holiday Inn Manila Galleria. Uh, she started there last February. Before that, she was Director of Organization Development and Talent Acquisition with uh, JG Summit Holdings. And prior to that, she has joined many illustrious organizations, Digital Mobile Philippines, San Miguel Yamamura Packaging Corporation, and Metal Drug Inc. Uh, she also finished her BS Psychology with a uh, with, uh, Latin honor of cum laude from St. Paul College, Manila in 2000. So without further ado, let me introduce, let me turn you over to our speaker this morning, Miss Princess Hyacinth Pernia Esguera. Welcome, Princess. Good morning, Maribel. Thank you for that kind introduction. And thank you everyone for listening in in our topic for today. Thank you, PSTD, for inviting me. So allow me to, to talk about a very important topic nowadays, which is learning. As we all know, um, the, the pandemic has actually shifted a lot of our attention towards business recovery, changes in business strategy, and a lot of cost savings. However, we cannot actually ignore the, the fact that learning is very important these days. We're doing a lot of business restructuring. We're changing different roles. We're going to a leaner and meaner organization. We're in upskilling is very important. And I am in a situation, in a sector that is badly hit by the pandemic, but also offers a lot of opportunity for learning. And the key takeaway so far is that learning is the foundation of survival. It's actually how we reinvent ourselves and respond to the different challenges that we have to do. When I joined the hospitality sector in February of 2020, I was able to realize that the hospitality work may seem glamorous on the outside, but like a swan, people are paddling hard underneath and yet maintaining that grace under pressure. And I also saw a lot of people who demonstrate others first that in times of pandemic, willing to forget about themselves in the service of their mission. And that alone, I have high respect for the people behind the industry who's surviving, who's thriving, who has no excuse for giving customer ser service no matter what. And for that, there are a lot of community sharing and lessons that I would be happy to discuss with the group today. And this will be relevant not only for the hospitality sector, but also with the other industries now listening in as we share gems of thoughts of our own journey and still being able to, to thrive with our people. And as HR, we are in the pivot of this uncertain times. Our people are our assets. And now I think the role more than ever or the focus next to the CEO would be the human resources. We are on the center of changing the people's strategy faster and thinking ahead in order to protect the business. Things like, what if there will be a second wave? How do we protect our employees from the pandemic? How do we ensure that we're on top of the compliance regulation? We change us every day. These are the things that keep us awake at night and should be on top as we drive the human resource organization. The second that we always remember is that our key asset is our people. When I started in the hospitality sector, one of my mentors told me, one thing that you should bear in mind, the customers keep going back to the hotel because of your people. And it resonates in my mind how important the role is to be centered on how that 
brand and the experience emanates from our own employee. And right now, there are people are undergoing a lot of emotions. However, we cannot neglect the fact that we should continue to invest on the learning and development and growth talents so they remain loyal and focused. My third point, and this has been ongoing, that with a leaner organization, it is important to upskill to the highest capability. We're moving our organization to a less top heavy, less specialized role, but more of a generalist type of approach, wherein people do end to end. Nowadays, there are no more silos into what we do from the legwork and the strategy piece. To end to end, we have to upskill. We have to be ready to, to respond as our business changes as well. From catering to food on the go, we know that. From our leisurely state travel to room only accommodation. And right now we have the work from hotel. All of these business models happening so fast and we have to be on top on the capability building. And that is what I am passionate about as I talk about uh, this, this piece and uh, share with you the things that we have learned along the way. What works, what does not work, and how do we actually push it forward. At this point, I'd like to see some interaction from the group, and I'd like to ask, what does it take for you to stay engaged in your organization today? The question revolves around staying engaged, not only staying, but when we are engaged, we know that we're giving it 100% or more, and that we're willing to go the extra mile no matter what. That we don't only look at the present, but we also stick our eyes on the prize. We invite you to put your answers in the chat box. Feel free to put your responses to this question in the chat box. This is an interesting question. It's not just merely staying, it's really staying engaged. Okay, here's one uh, response from Ana Maria, uh, Ana Maria Marabot, uh, passion, she says. Michelle Selisana says, mission and vision. Vilma Antonio says, commitment. From Sara Lee, when we see the organization pivoting as well, when we see them doing something about the situation. Thank you, Sara Lee. Uh, we have from Orea Pascual, focus on the mandate. From Princess Velasco, express gratitude and commitment. From Mia Akupan, personal values aligned to corporate values. Monica Pacifico says, shared commitment of both company and the employees. Uh, uh, love for children, according to Princess De Lee Devino. Fairy Lynn Estomino says, resonance in the vision. Nico Alberto Aranya, when organization is beneficial to all. Roland Conanan says, happy environment. Marifel Pantua says, we have a teacher's oath commitment. Of course. Thank you for that. Thank you for that sharing. I couldn't agree more that for us to feel alive, we have to have a purpose. And you have said it a number of times, vision. And I, I, I couldn't agree more that there should be a compass wherein no matter how uncertain the realities are that we have today, we are aware of our destination. And I think like in going to a war, we are aware that we are in a long-term war and that there would be battles that we have to win and we have to pick them. So thank you for that sharing. So as I move along, um, what I'd like us to pay attention to is that as an organization, we talked about vision, we talked about values aligning to our personal, our organization values aligning to our personal values. But I think what resonates to everyone on a personal and professional level is that resiliency is what we want to achieve, which will enable both learning and performance that capacity to withstand any kind of pressure and the ability to have that kind of mental strength in order to, to see beyond what is obvious. 
And what do you like about uh, the situation right now that uh, facilitated the fast track digital transformation? Learning suddenly become accessible. Like I had an opportunity to listen to a lot of Harvard online courses, a lot of su subject matter experts doing social media teachings, community learning, sharing, and these are opportunities that, that we should also recognize even in this tough time. So I'll be talking about a few steps that I think will enable us to, to be aware of enablement and performance in our day-to-day -day activities. Number one is identify the critical skills that will be relevant in the long run. And as HR and learning and development practitioners, I, I heard a lot of people tell me, you know, we're doing succession planning, we're preparing people for roles for next year. But actually next year, the market changed, the priorities change. And right now the roles that we thought would be relevant next year is no longer relevant. So how do we actually catch up with that? And the answer has been, the consistent answer that I, ha I have learned along the way is, we focus now on the soft skills because the operational skills can be a consequence of our possession of the soft skills. And it's important for us to identify those skill set that will make us win in the future. So for, for our hotel, Holiday Inn, Manila Galleria, and Crown Plaza, Manila Galleria, we follow a leadership framework. And I'm sure you all have this in your respective organizations, which starts in leading yourself, maturing into leading others, leading managers, leading an area or a function, leading a strategy, and then the topmost is the business. And along all these leadership tracks, our competencies have been set, and that is being brand-hearted. How do we demonstrate passion and love and personification of the brand, true hospitality, making guests smile? And second is thinking ahead. How do our own personal priorities align to, to organizational priorities? Championing change, how fast do we adopt to changes, leading people, developing people, driving results, and working collaboratively. And all of this have, have different gradation or different intensity as we move along the, the different leadership track. And it's, it's important that in, in our respective organization, we take ownership of our own development. So when I say here, develop people, we also mean to say that we, we own it, we own the process and we lead ourselves into when we know the track that we want to achieve, that I am in the leading others, moving into the leading manager's track, there is an awareness of the, the, the skill set that we should be able to finish along the way. So we have this, what we call the best of both worlds, wherein we harness the expertise of our internal resource, and we also harness external expertise such as Harvard, Cornell, and make it available in our platform that we call Berlin. And very important, which as an HR practitioner, we all believe in everything. The culture starts from leadership. And our leadership right now is on the spotlight. People look up to us to give us that sense of direction, that sense of strength. And we know, we are aware that this crisis made us a leader. On a personal level, that six months that I joined the hospitality industry allowed me to fast track my learning for the industry. And having recognized that, it is an, a perfect opportunity to also teach our leadership on important attitudes that will be transformational in this time of crisis. So these are examples of leadership programs uh, that you may consider leading difficult conversations, leading through difficult times and uncertainty, coaching with confidence, building resilience, managing your stakeholder, and creating a psychological safety. Leading difficult conversations because a lot of hard decisions are happening now and people, we need to explain to people in an empathic and truthful manner. Leading through difficult times and uncertainty, talk about having that internal strength. When there is an outer turmoil, we seek for the inner strength. Coaching with confidence, 
allow with multiplicating our effectiveness with others and coaching them to become better of better version of themselves. And we have mentioned about resilience from the very beginning, believing that this too will pass and we will come out stronger and better. I think the kind of vibe or energy that we bring into the organization as leaders trickles down to our people. And this foundational forces are, are, are very helpful in our own experience as we, as we remind ourselves that we set the tone for the entire organization. I mentioned the third point when I said we are pivoting as HR. And the third is we wanted to be a lean and mean fighting machine. And when I say lean and mean fighting machine, we're looking at what can we harness from our own organization that we can grow them from within. Fast in the same manner that externally Everything is going so fast track in terms of changes. So internally in our own organization, we also take a look at high potential talents who can step up and uh, battle the war with us. In IHG, we unveil the RISE initiative, which is actually the objective is to inspire and mentor our female leaders. So these are talents that we're grooming to become general managers in the future. And because we have a diversity and inclusion advocacy, this program actually centers on female high potential talents. What, what are the elements of the program? We have a mentor. A mentor is a female leader, already a general manager from different regions who would have a regular check, checkpoint with our employees. And then we have a sponsor. Interestingly, the, the sponsor should be a male. And, and this is sort of a cross-referencing each other in terms of the other person learns from the other or what we call reverse coaching as well. And the third piece is the career planning support that they, they are aware of the areas that they needed to develop. They also get to learn about their blind spot and there is a community of people who would help them discover themselves and unleash their potential. So the third piece is actually giving back. Now that these RISE candidates experienced it, how it is to be in this program. They developed their own lean-in lean circle that, um, that actually helps them to translate or have a regular meeting with, with people that they will mentor in return. So these are examples of uh, people in our RISE program. We have Denise Doliardo, the front office manager, and uh, Regina Santana. They're very fortunate because they underwent rigorous selection, selection process across the region to be able to qualify in a RISE initiative. Again, the intent is to prepare them to become general managers in the future. Having said that, I'd like to pause and hear from you. What do you think is the most important competency for the hospitality sector or in any service-oriented sector? for that matter. And I'm seeing ethics. Yes, it's very important that when we say we will do it, we, we will do it. I remember last holiday I was in Bacolod and I was meaning to complete my uh, my Simbangabi and I asked the hotel front office what time is the Simbangabi and the person was not able to revert to me. But she she looked for me just to tell me what time it, it is. I think ethics is really important. Communication, yes, because we deal with a lot of people. We have be exact and at the same time managing expectations when things are possible or when things are not possible. Leadership is very important, I agree, personal and professional leadership. Servant leadership from Melanie Casipe, yes, I agree. Um, in a service industry, we forget ourselves and uh, 
I, I think it's not asked. It's just natural in our DNA to do that. It makes us happy. <laughs> From Arlene Peralta, she says, dealing with ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank, thank you for your sharing. So the, the most important that I saw was communication skill. Customer orientedness, yes, I agree. And ethics. So this will be in our in our mind, rest assured, as you move along. Communication, customer orientedness, and ethics. We have another one from Segundo, Jun Segundo Abrera, Abrera Jr., Intercultural Competency. Mm. That's very important because understanding the person's background and how we communicate back, again, going back to empathy. That understanding of people, I think, is a, a foundational competency in the hospitality or in any other service. I think you cannot you cannot give what you don't have. It has to come from within. Inuhugot natin sa loob natin eh. Parang how it is to make people satisfied, to make them have a memorable experience. And, and for that alone, again, why there is high respect for, for the people doing the job. <laughs> okay, so I think we can continue. Okay. Are you sharing your screen? I, I'm supposed to share my screen. Um, I'm just having a... Okay, so there. There you go. Okay, so the first one is for us to choose the skill set that will be relevant in the future. And we have discussed a number of things. Communication, ethics, customer orientedness. And the, the second step is actually to choose the training approach. As of our situation right now, for the pre-COVID, 55% of the learning activities are happening face-to-face, -face, especially in an industry that is very operational. But right now, a lot of um, changes have had happened, and we know that there are different training approaches, the web-based learning, the facilitator-led learning, and then in the middle is the blended option. But right now, we're leaning towards a number of digital learning because they are more accessible. It has a wider reach. And it, even if we do a face-to-face -face nowadays, there is a requirement on social distancing. But what I'd like to to reinforce is the message that right now there is a rich source of information and knowledge because this transformation also opened doors to a lot of free webinars like what PSD is giving us across the region. So this is an example of a training module that we have for the competency brand hearted. And these are the, the training learning tracks on the platform that the incumbents must uh, finish. Marketing essentials, customer focus, being brand hearted are some of the examples. In terms of framework or what's in there in our um, technology platform, our framework has been learn, practice, and reflect. Learning meaning the content, and the teachings via video or readout, the practice is an opportunity to actually translate it on the job. And the third piece is the reflection. There are questions that we have to answer. And um, before we can say that we have completed 
the trained program. In the same manner, um, a lot of you would say, okay, we don't have a technology platform. How can we do it? Surprisingly, there are people in our organization who would step up and do the work. And these people didn't have any background to do it. Surprisingly, they just watch on YouTube and then they're able to come up with marvelous programs like our COVID safety program 10-minute trainer has been developed in-house and this covers um, COVID-19 overview, personal protective equipment, social distancing, hygiene practices, and the DOLA DTI interim guidelines on workplace control of COVID. You know, these things, sometimes it's burdensome for us to just read them from a handout, but this kind of translation into a 10-minute training program can actually sustain or ignite interest. And this is an example of the 10-minute uh, training program on the personal protective equipment. So there is a content, there is a video. And again, since our framework is learn, practice, and reflect, there are questions that we have to finish at the end of the 10-minute training program. And before our employee goes back to work, they are required to undergo that COVID 10-minute training program as a requirement. Okay, so I think one of the heart of, of the hospitality roles is the housekeeper. And I mentioned about moving practical skills training to the digital platform. How do we translate it into our culture of clean digitally? We have actually launched our IHG culture of clean that defines our promise to our customers when it comes to cleanliness. So this is an example of a housekeeper conducting misting in the room. And there are step-by-step -step guidance on how they should do it, the high touch points, and also how to disinfect our partners in cleanliness and an awareness on what, what, what they should do in order to keep up with our promise. So on the job, of course, I mentioned about blended training, I was in the elevator a while ago with one of our housekeepers and I asked, how are you coping that right now your role changed? Before, you're not dressed up like this when you clean a room, but now things have changed because we're, we're room only accommodation and we know that we are accepting um, um, people who are on quarantine. And the person said that, yes, there are a lot of changes to what I am doing. And interestingly, he noted that right now, he is also teaching the customer how to set up their own beds. They're just giving them a note that they should do without having to call them uh, necessarily. And on his own, he's, he's also able to catch up on, on these things. And he said, when there are things that I don't understand from the digital platform, I ask, but there is a social distance. So I think we, we will not perfect it the first time. It's going to be an iterative process, but as L&D practitioners, we just believe that it can work and that with constant trial, with the constant iteration, we will be able to somehow adopt the, the new kind of learning environment. But we understand that even us learning practitioner, we have our own barriers to digital adoption. And I would ad admit that I am not that tech savvy as well. Um, I'd like to do a quick poll on your own musings. As we, we know that we should, this is the way to go, this is the way to do it, but what are, what are the things that, um, that stop you or that prevents you from translating your training programs into a digital content? Investments, lack of knowledge, platform limitation. Uh, Ms. Maribel, go ahead. We have a question here posted by Melanie. So while we're waiting for the rest of the people to answer, I'd like to share this with you. A uh, question from Melanie says, since you don't have a sophisticated e-learning LMS platform specifically for your COVID training, how are you able to keep track of course completion? Okay, well, the COVID training was done under MST, and I think there is um, there is a way to track it. 
I'm, I'm there. We do it um via MS. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are also comments in the chat box. Barriers, intermittent connection, slow internet connection, skills gap. Okay, yes. I think even even here, what we're looking at is really the internet platform, the limitation, digital literacy platform limitation. Melanie has made a good point and clear design and development goals. Internet connection. That's true, no? Because not all of our learners have internet at home or even have that mobile device or laptop that would, will enable them to learn. I think you're making a valid and practical um, point here when you're saying that internet lack of digital literacy but but what I am seeing as a reality now is there is less restriction when we do something it seems like people are willing willing to learn at the moment and uh, understand what it takes to be able to be part of that circle or opportunity and when you when you sell that having that clear design, yes, um, it, it's it's very important that we begin with an end in mind. Like, what will our content uh, serve? How do we who will be the user of this one? How do we actually develop it to be able to reach different groups? Second intimidation, yes, uh, I agree with that. I also have that. But what I do, I, I leverage on the strength of people. I can be, I can do the content and then I just work with my colleague who is very adept in technology and that kind of a shared responsibility. And so far it, it has worked. There's an interesting comment made by Sara Lee here. I think many are still hoping that face-to-face -face will be back soon. So wait and see lang muna kami. Oh, mm -mm. people will still look for for that for, for for what they are they're training programs that are best done face to face yes uh miss Sarah Lee. and uh i think that's also one important topic that we should be discussing as l d when because covid is here to stay when it happens that we have to do the face to face what what are the things that we should learn from each other as well And in digital learning, it's a, I, I think what we wanted to achieve is also sharing and uh, follow through because um, unlike in a face-to-face -face setup, it's easy for us to raise our hand and give our input or make it interactive. But in a digital, you, you just really, you have to convert your one-day training into a one-hour training. And that alone is a very hard task and I can imagine Miss Maribel people in the academy how you you are also in the middle of all these uh, transformational changes converting face-to-face -face learning into a digital platform that's right no a major challenge talaga sa academe moving from face-to-face -to, -face to digital Okay, so in summary, what I saw was internet, lack of knowledge, digital um, in intimidation. Yes, okay. Okay, we can move along. Okay, so in, in PSDD's, PSDD's webinar, Rethinking Learning Through Disruption, what I have learned, there are 
different barriers in increasing our, our adoption. And the first one is the digital disruption. And we have discussed about it um, a while ago. Second is cultural resistance. And this is hard to break. Like things that we're used to doing already dead set. And we have to shift it into um, a different model. And my, my, my observation is here is we have to pivot somewhere. We have to try it somewhere. And then along the way, expand its magnitude. And the third piece, which is very close to heart, is l and readiness. How ready are we at the front of, of this um, huge task that we will be ready to also pay attention to what it takes in order for us to be aware of what our learner needs and whether it actually impacts the competencies or the ob learner objectives that we want them to have. Also, what I learned along with its barriers are recommended approaches on how we can do baby steps in order to achieve um, translation of face-to-face um, -face into a digital platform. Under digital disruption, we have to build infrastructure. And again, for certain industries, there are those who would have already their technology platform. All it takes is for them to explore it. So the first message is now that we have um, time to, to navigate um, all these technology platforms, make use of them, convert some of our times uh, formerly on social media to now accessing valuable piece of knowledge that we can actually, that can enhance our um, personal and professional understanding. Second is experimenting and trying new approaches under cultural resistance. It's, uh, it's okay to fail, and what's important is the learnings and also how we iterate it later on. And the l and readiness from a training person to enabling learning. And there are different approaches or different mindset that we should break and unlearn in order to achieve or enable learning, not only in the structured manner, but even on the self-paced um, capacity our learners. And my third and final point is to evaluate whether all of our identification of competency as the first step, the second step is the determining the, the training approach. The third objective is whether they impact the upskilling of a leaner workforce. Our picture of success is to become a lean and lean fighting machine. So this is the, the mind, body, and spirit model that I would like to, um, to end with. First is, as we move forward, let's have a mindset of a startup. You know how startups, they imagine possibilities, they fail fast, they move forward, and that, that courage, that, that mindset um, from, from zero base, we're throwing away outside the window what we have known from before and try to think of a startup because Everything right now is like becoming a startup. Our business models have changed. There are a lot of innovation that's happening. It has become a huge playground for us. But in every decision or in every idea that we have, we also accept the brutal realities or we call it cautious optimism on ideas that can work or may not work. And it's, it, it's uh, I, I recognize the kind of culture that startups have in nurturing ideas and uh, failing, failing forward and moving fast. The second piece is an agile workforce. I mentioned in the beginning that we're moving from a multi-skilling generalist um, to that kind of organization structure from our specialty roles and people adjust to market changes and retain the highest level of customer care just the same. And ground zero, which is very important, that when in the midst of outer turmoil, we seek our inner strength as individuals and our as our leaders. And I add that strength doesn't come from what you can do. It comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't. And while we believe that this world is meant to be explored and people will travel again, when the time comes that it is safe to again, which it will, we will be ready to welcome everyone to our doors once more, stronger and better.
Thank you. All right, so you, there you have it, Prin Princess from, uh, Princess Esguerra is, is from, um, from Robinson's Land, Crown Plaza Manila Gallery and Holiday Inn Manila Gallery. I actually realized why I enjoy staying in those hotels. Uh, for many years, I've, I've been invited to do programs in your hotel and uh, Tamara, they make me smile. You know, the little things that they do to show their care and their concern for the customers is so apparent in your hotel. Um, we are open to questions and answer, uh, to questions right now that uh, Princess can answer. Is there anything that you'd like to ask her or clarify? Uh, let's give them a bit of time. Let me just share with you my own uh, realization. So I think it's very important that we have a, a competency model that uh, responds to the crisis. Uh, some, some competencies may have to be added uh, to face the crisis better. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flexibility to move to the digital platform also is so important. Okay, any, any, any questions from anyone? See, it looks like uh, they don't have questions. They're probably reflecting on your very inspiring talk. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank you very much, Princess, for accepting our invitation and for you to take time from your busy schedule to share with us your thoughts. Oh, there's something here in the chat box that I think I should read from Jerry, yeah, one of my friends. Um, this pandemic is really new to us. I agree with the speaker that this new normal really require some fast thinking, how best to adapt to the situation. We are learning and adapting. We should learn and adapt early. Learn from failures and necessary enhancements. We should really allow for crawling first, standing, falling mm -hmm. again, standing again before we could run. Hope the hotel industry recovers soon. Yeah, I so, I so um, pray for that because I know that this is the one of the most badly hit uh, industry. And I look forward to going back to your hotel because yes, please. I really yes. enjoy my stay in your hotel. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so with that, I'd like to turn you over now to, to Lo. Thank you so much, Princess. Hope you can Thank come you. and join us again in some future events. Sure, thank you. Thank you so much to our speaker, Princess, and of course to our moderator, Maribel, who's been uh, there for the whole hour and, uh, and uh, bridging the, the communication provided to us by our participants this morning. So again, we're currently at the tail end of our Accelerating Digital Readiness of Technical Trainers. So the theme is Tech Train. And we've just finished moving practical skills training to the virtual platform in the hotel industry, again by our guest speaker for this morning, Princess Hyacinth Itzgera, HR Director for Robinson's Land Corporation. And we're going to be moving to the last Learn From Home webinar for August, and it's going to be adapting to the new normal. PLD's technical training journey that's going to be Tuesday next week, August 25. The speaker is Elmer Ferrer, the head of technical training of PLDD, and that's going to be the same time. So, of course, we're looking forward to seeing you again. And, of course, if you have any more colleagues that's going to be, uh, that's going to, that you think is going to benefit from the Learn From Home modules, then please do invite them. So we're also going to have a few more paid programs that we would like to endorse to you. The first one is going to be Clear as Ice. It's going to be next week, Monday, 24 August from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you want to create and deliver powerful virtual presentations, this is one that's going to be delivered to us by Mr. Wawi Wong. And I'm going to also moderate this particular session. We're also going to have the Coach versus Crisis series combating crisis through coaching from August 26th to August 28th. 
that's also going to be 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. for those three days. That's going to be delivered by Coach May S.J. Soriano. And then we also have this coming August 25, Introduction to Miro, an online collaboration tool. So this is also, this is actually going to be our Itipanan, our GMM for the month of August. So if you're available and if you're a regardless if you're a member or still uh, or not a member yet of PSTV, please feel free to register for our Itipanan this 25th. And of course, one of our flagship programs here in PSTV would be the Master Trainer Certification. And we have the complete lineup for the year in front of you, starting from the designing e-learning course this coming September, joining uh, Marby, and we also have Miss Evie on Training Fundamentals also in September. And then to close out that particular month, we have Miss Maya to deliver training needs analysis towards course design. Come October, we have facilitating digital learning to be delivered by Jody and managing the learning and development function to be delivered by Miss Vivian Arnovic. Closing out the year would be assessing training effectiveness based on needs to be delivered by Mr. Alexander Kibanov. Of course, we have here right in front of you our digital master trainer certification package. So these are basically all the six courses that I've mentioned earlier, plus assessment in the four competencies needed for you to become certified as a master trainer. The premier training certification to be conferred by PSTV here in our country. And of course, last but not the least, please save the date. This coming November 16 to 18 is going to be the 45th National Convention of the Philippine Society for Talent Development. So this is going to be the largest gathering of all talent development practitioners in the country. We're, we're actually preparing a lot of good topics and a lot of, of very inspiring and very engaging speakers for these three days. All right. So again, thank you to everyone who's joined us this morning. We have around 100 people at the close, both here in Zoom and in Facebook Live. And uh, thank you so much for everyone who also shared their thoughts, their insights, their anecdotes. We have quite a couple of quotes here from Mr. Segundo. Thank you to, to Miss Anna. And thank you to everyone who stayed with us for the past few months that we've been delivering Learn From Home series. So I guess it's going to be see you next week as we close out Tech Train. That's going to be again on the 25th at 11 a.m. I wish you all a good afternoon.